This is Campus News, reporting the top stories from colleges and universities. Next on Campus News, hear why these pigs are changing their diets so we can change ours. See how an NDSU legend turned back the clock for a local high school. We'll show you one classroom that has students diving for an A. But first, three local college students are facing drug charges after being arrested on campus. Good morning and welcome to Campus News. I'm Brian Ashburn. And I'm Jessica Gulseth. Police have arrested three North Dakota State University students after finding drugs in their car. 19-year-olds Austin Clem and Cody B. Johnson were charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. Hunter Schleski, also 19 years old, was charged with possession of marijuana with the intent to sell, possession of heroin, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Lieutenant Greg Stone says an officer pulled the students over after a routine traffic stop on NDSU's campus. The officer then discovered heroin and marijuana in their car. Lieutenant Stone says heroin is an unusual drug to find on a college campus. Arraignment is scheduled for a later date in March. Students have reported a number of thefts at the Center for the Arts on Minnesota State University's campus as well as M State. Public Safety Director Greg Lemke sent out an email to students reporting a number of incidents in which art supplies were stolen. Lemke says there have been five thefts reported at MSUM and two at M State. He says that of the lockers that were stolen from, only two had locks on them. Lemke says public safety officers are increasing the number of rounds they make through the art building. Um, it's the first rash of thefts that we really had. I mean, on occasion you will have a theft of something, you know, sometimes a computer or something larger, but not where someone is seemingly coming back and, and taking things. Lemke says students can prevent their items from being stolen by putting a lock on their locker. The Dean of Students at the University of Jamestown is on leave while administrators investigate his recent arrest. Gary Van Zinderen is now free on bond and no new court dates have been set. Van Zinderen's wife called the police and said he had assaulted her. He was picking up their children when she says he bruised her thigh with a suitcase. Police Chief Scott Edinger says the call was domestic. When there is evidence of a bruise, an arrest is required. In an email sent to students and faculty, university officials say Van Zinderen is taking a leave and the university won't be commenting on his personal matters. Administrators say they will review the status of his allegations when Van Zinderen's leave is over. The United States Secret Service is working with the NDSU campus security after finding counterfeit bills on campus. Five $100 counterfeit bills were found at the Bison Connection in the Memorial Union on campus. The Bison Connection can be used by students to make bill payments and account deposits. Together, they have been working to find the creators of the counterfeit bills. While the money didn't feel or look official, the Secret Service says the money had a decent looking watermark and security strip. Campus police say this isn't the first time they have found counterfeit bills being used on campus. For many people, meeting that special someone in college tends to be the norm. Reporter Jordan Schreyer shows us how one student at MSU Moorhead is using an app to find romance. I was super nervous. <laughs> As MSUM sophomore Cassie Bull gets ready for her date, she's thinking about the upcoming night. He says he's taking me to Taco Bell. What to wear and how to do her hair. Is it bad that I want to wear my hair in a ponytail? This wasn't your grandparents' first date. Talking on the app and then later exchanged numbers and started texting. The app is Tinder. It links up with Facebook to pull your profile pictures. When a person pops up, you swipe to the right if you like. Yes. And to the left if you don't. No. That's really awful because that app is just like doing the one thing that people told us not to do, judge people based on their looks. For whatever reason, on the first swipe, your brain discounted that person. Maybe you missed out on somebody that really is a good match for you. The other person doesn't find out which way you swiped unless they like you back. If they're attractive, I'm like, yes, they like me. The app also allows for multiple conversations to happen at once. Is it bad if I say I'm talking to two guys? And Cassie says it has a large following. There's a lot more people that use it than you think. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm like going through and I'm like, I've seen you on campus, you, 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 you. But Gail understands why it has such a large following. Looks like a fun toy. It's shiny, it's fun, it's easy. You swipe, you look, you see, it's like shopping. Cassie <laughs> giggles with excitement as the app worked. The first date led to a second and a third <laughs> is in the future. With photographer no. Jessica Gulseth, no. Jordan Schreyer, yes. Campus News. No. 
Tinder's creators say the app gets more than 500 million swipes a day. Is a college degree worth the money? A recent study says yes. A Pew Research Center report shows a person with only a high school education makes about $770,000 in their lifetime. A four-year degree holder will earn, on average, about $1.4 million, a difference of $630,000. The Bureau of Labor Statistics found that 3.8% of people who hold bachelor's degrees or higher diplomas were unemployed in January 2014. That's compared to 12.2% unemployment rate among those with only a high school degree. High school students are making the senior slide a thing of the past. Ariana Babcock reports on how increasing numbers of high school students are putting in extra work to earn free college credits. Guys, guys, it, no, it, it, when Emily Sen signed up for classes her senior year, she didn't want it to be a breeze. She wanted a challenge. Her challenge was to find subjects she was interested in and earn college credits by taking advanced placement classes such as AP Calculus and AP Psychology. You can take these classes and realize like, oh, I really like this or I really don't like this at all. She says she was inspired to take on the extra workload after talking to other high school students who passed the test. I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. An increasing number of Minnesota high school students in the last year are preparing for the college classroom. Junior Dan Stone is one of them. It helps me prepare for college so that when, I, when I'm actually in a class, I'm used to the way it goes and, and the flow and the rigor of it. Last year, when Minnesota high school students walked out on graduation, they had saved their families nearly $44 million, according to the Education Department. Although saving money is a benefit of these AP classes, yes and no are perfectly acceptable answers. Social studies teacher Jeremy Nelson explains how these challenging classes are preparing students for the real world. And there's intrinsic value in, in accomplishing something that was very difficult. Pass or fail, Nelson says these students are learning rigor, study habits, and how to persevere through challenging situations of college. Uh, Nothing. A test can determine. Please raise your right hand if you know the answer. With photographer Megan Nearing, Ariana up, Babcock, up, Campus News. The College Board found that last year Minnesota high school students earned more than 126,000 college credits for free by passing the advanced placement test. One business in Moorhead is taking the pressure off students and low-income workers by offering to do their taxes for free. Lakes and Prairies Community Action takes your problem and turns it into cash. All you need is your picture ID, social security card, W-2s from your workplace, avoided check, and last year's tax return. Local college students studying accounting are volunteering at the center to help out. I print it out and give, let the person that we prepared it for know what their refund is and they're usually really excited because lower income individuals usually get pretty good refunds because of like the earned income tax credit and that. The site is open Wednesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 8 p.m. It will remain open until April 10th when tax season officially closes. It's the celebration of the century, literally. NDSU's theater department is celebrating its 100th season. Reporter Jocelyn Horzdowski takes us behind the scenes and into the world of theater. Well, I hope we're still doing theater in 100 years. This year marks the 100th season for NDSU's Little Country Theater. It, the words can't describe how grateful I am to be a part of that. Founded in February of 1914, the Little Country Theater has provided a century's worth of entertainment. And there's really a, a lot more to theater than just performance. Students at NDSU are also involved in the important technical side of theater. We bring to life what the actors are trying to portray on stage. If we weren't there, the actors would just be standing naked on a dark stage. To showcase students' work from across the century, NDSU has opened up this gallery. People can see students' designs in sets, lighting, and costumes. But what does it mean for the next century of theater? The way technology and, uh, has changed and that media uh, and entertainment has changed just even over the past 20 years. It's hard to predict where we're going to be in the next 100 years. Even with no future guarantees for theater at NDSU, theater in the present continues to impact the lives of many. Theater is special to me because theater saved my life. 
Um, it gave me a home and a place where I knew that I could be me. Jocelyn Horostowski, Campus News. The Art of Theater Gallery exhibition is free and open weekdays until April 10th. The Economic Society is continuing their tradition of helping others by collecting unwanted cell phones for the Rape and Abuse Crisis Center. The phones serve as a reliable connection to emergency services. TJ Hansen is the Economic Society advisor and member of the Rape and Abuse Crisis Center. She says there are two roles for the phones. If the phone works, then what they will do is make sure that there's no contact information from the original user and the phone is programmed so that the only call it can make is for 911. For other phones that do not work, they will take any parts that have value and they will sell those on secondary markets. They are partnering with Campus Sustainability, which collects unwanted electronics year-round. Any phones they receive this month go to the Economic Society. Donations will be accepted until the end of March. Students are diving into their college curriculum in a unique way. Photojournalists Lindsay Anderson and Mike Hansen take us to the underwater classroom. We're teaching a, a scuba program over at the uh, Morehead State Pool. There's not a major at any of the colleges that require you be a certified diver to, to graduate. But it's amazing when I talk to former students how many of them actually end up using uh, the diving in whatever profession they go on to do, marine biology um, and things like that. Not only am I a biologist, but I'm also an aquatic biologist. So not only am I taking pressure skills, biology skills, but I'm also taking aquatic skills as well as um, a great experience to get underwater and to get face to face with um, my study organism, fish and aquatics. And so tonight we will be doing some other um, deep water dive procedures as well as compass training. For some people, water just isn't for them or having the organism swimming around them isn't for them. And for me, that's exactly what I want and that's exactly why I'm here. So I encourage everyone to try it, but if it's not for you, then maybe not. Once you complete four certification dives and are certified, it's a lifetime certification. Never expires. Certified forever. Uh, they get that certification two years, five years after they're done with college. They're, they're established in their job. They take a vacation. You know, uh, it's something that they will be able to do for the rest of their lives. After pool training and just four certification dives, the divers are certified for life. MSUM students came together to celebrate their heritage as part of an effort to spread cultural awareness on campus. Reporter Hannah Corey shows us how education can be as tasty as it is informative. Soul food. Soul food is just something in black culture, I guess that's what we call it. It's just good old greasy food, stuff you shouldn't have every day, but you love it anyways. MSUM's Black Student Union brought people together from across campus for a night filled with soul. So it's just an event just to celebrate black culture and to also get other people from other cultures involved. People like to stick with people from their culture because that's their comfort zone. And we just wanted to get people from all different backgrounds in here, enjoying some food, hanging out together. So what was on the menu for the night? Menu, we got fried chicken, sweet mashed potatoes, cornbread, and then we have Kool-Aid to drink. Besides serving up soul food, they had some black history trivia. Yeah. And also a performance by MSUM's dance group. <laughs> All in hopes of spreading some cultural awareness. I just hope that they learn that the Black Student Union is welcome to all people of all races, of all cultural backgrounds. I think that's the biggest part is we just want people to know that we're, we're for everyone, not just black students. This was the second soul food dinner. The group hopes to keep doing these for years to come. Hannah Corey, Campus News. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion plans different events on campus to raise cultural awareness. One of these events brought two speakers to give a lecture about the miseducation of the N-word. Marcellus Davis told the audience to think of racism as a contagion. The lecture was not only directly focused on the N-word, but rather how Davis believes white supremacy has birthed racism. Alexander Hines explained that race has nothing to do with biological characteristics. He says that it is a social construction and anyone can be racist. The presenters hope students become more aware of the word and its use on a regular basis. 
For decades, young girls have played with Barbie dolls, Easy Bake Ovens, and princess gowns. Reporter Onizi Ohikeri shows us one program that it's encur that's encouraging a new generation of young girls to design robots and blast rockets. Ooh, I have an idea. It may seem like a group of young girls simply having fun. But beyond your name-guessing games lies a mission set by the Society of Women Engineers at NDSU. A mission that has come to life through the Tech Girls program. Tech Girls is a 10-week program that is organized every semester. We bring in middle school age girls from all over the Fargo-Moorhead area and they come and they learn about engineering and it's just a really great program. Each week, the girls are introduced to a different kind of engineering by carrying out different projects. We're building a dam out of popsicle sticks to keep water from flowing under and into our other river. A project that introduced the concept of agricultural engineering. With agricultural, I wanted to show more of an environmental and different approach to engineering because some girls might just think that engineering is boring because you don't get to like do anything outside. And I wanted to show them that it was, could be fun. As for the members of the society, the goal of the program is quite clear. I think it just gets them excited about, about learning and realizing their full potential because as a woman, you know, we're not necessarily encouraged to be engineers and mathematicians. It's not something that's really common. Okay, I think it's a little too fragile. Although some of the girls are not sure of their future careers, I want to be a musician, <laughs> an actress or an engineer. <laughs> The program gives them the confidence to go out and find your dreams. I hope we have enough soil. With photographer Darby Fike, Onizio Hikare, Campus News. <laughs> Tech Girls is a national program created by the YWCA, and it began at NDSU in 2003. Researchers at Virginia Tech have found a way to power batteries with sugar. They are called bio-batteries. They work the same way that metabolism does in our bodies, by converting sugar into energy. They have a greater power output than other bio-batteries and have a greater charge than most lithium batteries. Researchers say that with this new battery, phones will be able to last up to 10 days without recharging. Researchers say this will be a better alternative to current batteries because the materials are biologically based and cheaper to use. An NDSU professor recently got down and dirty with a group of pigs, but he wasn't wrestling with them for the fun of it. Reporter Meredith Watney brings us to the pig pen to tell us what he discovered. These large white pigs don't go straight from their pens to the market. Animal science professor Eric Berg tested a group of Yorkshire cross pigs in an attempt to discover whether or not eating red meat is as bad as some research suggests. We kind of took the Atkins diet to the extreme. We let them eat as much cooked ground beef as they could. The other diet was the control diet, which was made up of corn and soybeans. The study was scheduled to last six months, but the pigs ate Berg and his team out of money after just three. Pigs were eating 21 pounds of hamburger a day, and they got fat. They continued to get fat, 38% fatter, but they got less fat than the ones eating the control vegetable diet. So that's the big take home. Berg chose to test pigs because like humans, they're omnivores and their bodies react similar to food. But that high amount of fat, and there was no danger signs for risk of coronary heart disease. Not only did the veggie head pigs get 50% fatter, but they also had increased insulin levels. So do these results deem meat diets healthier than vegetarian diets? You can't eat and eat and eat high fat and high protein because it will convert to fat on your body. Perhaps that's what's going on in the United States. People don't pay attention to their essentials and they unwittingly overeat on one side or the other. Berg's results don't debunk vegetarian diets, but it can ease your guilt next time you eat a burger. So go ahead, eat like a pig. Just be sure to include a balanced mix of required nutrients. With photographer Naoya Uchida, Meredith Watney, Campus News. Berg's findings will be presented to the American Meat Science Association in June. And now we turn it over to Kenny Buck for a look at this week's sports. So we had a local basketball team win the conference for the first time in years. Yes, they clinched the number one seed in the conference tournament and traveled down to Sioux Falls for the NSIC conference tournament. Hard work, determination, and practice pays off. Just ask the MSUM men's basketball team. 
This season has been a great run for the Dragons. They won the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference for the first time in 32 years, winning their last three games to clinch the title. This included an overtime win against University of Mary to cap off the season. The team's efforts have not gone unrecognized. Senior Terrell Clark and junior Jordan Reaver have all been named to the All-NSIC second team in men's basketball. Reaver has been a steady performer for MSUM despite missing seven games because of injury. He's also one of the nation's top free throw shooters at 94.7%. Clark is the second best rebounder in the conference, averaging almost nine boards a game. The number one seeded Dragons took to Alex Nemzik Fieldhouse to take on the Concordia St. Paul Golden Bears in the first round of the NSIC Conference Tournament. It was a back and forth affair the entire night between the Dragons and Golden Bears as Tyler Vaughn takes the inbound pass into the lane for the bucket. He finished the night with six points, but the story of the first half was the shooting by the Golden Bears, making 14 of their first 20 shots and 6 of 8 from the three-point line. This gave the Bears a four-point lead going into halftime. Second half, Dragons trailed by three with 11 minutes left when they went on an 11-3 run, including this nice dish from Bingham to lean for the easy lay-in. The Dragons went up by five, never giving up the lead. When the buzzer sounded, the Dragons won 68-64. With the win, MSCM traveled to Sioux Falls for the quarterfinals to play Upper Iowa last Saturday. Solid defense and a balanced offense helped the Dragons to a 79-68 win over the Peacocks. Five Dragons scored in double figures to vault them into the semifinals against Winona State. Luck ran out for the Dragons, though, last Monday as the Warriors absolutely shut down the Dragon offense, holding them to its season-low 53 points. The Dragons now wait to see if they earn an automatic bid to the Central Region Tournament. MSM will find out their fate tomorrow night on the Selection Show at 9.30. North Dakota State University women's basketball coach Carolyn Dehoff is resigning, effective April 15th. Dehoff held a press conference to make the announcement as she thanked NDSU for the opportunity to coach the past six years. After starting her first two seasons finishing 16-13, and 13, the team has gotten progressively worse, winning only 40 games over the past four seasons. NSU Women's Athletic Director Lynn Dorn says the school plans to aggressively pursue a coach who shares their passion for women's basketball. Today's generation of college students probably aren't familiar with the name Irv Vinegar, but two decades ago the name was synonymous with North Dakota State University basketball. I caught up with the Bison legend to talk about his first season of coaching in over 21 years. One of the greatest things we love about sports is comebacks. The ability to say goodbye to the sport you love, only to rekindle the fire and the passion it takes to return to the game. 21 years ago, Irv Inniger stepped down as NDSU's men's basketball coach and says the job was nothing short of a blessing. Oh, it was awesome. I mean, I, I'm blessed. I was blessed to coach there for 14 years and then being the, as a senior associate athletic director for development, I was there for 36 years. And you, I'm 69, so it was over half my life I, I was there. 26! After retiring from NDSU three years ago, Inniger spent a few years away from basketball until last year when a good friend told him about a familiar position at a local high school. Park Christian job's open. I think you ought to apply for it. And I said, I'm not interested in coaching. And this, he and I both have a strong faith, so he said, would you pray for this? And I said, no, I'm not going to pray real hard. It's not something I want. He came back about 10 days, asked the same question. He had been praying. I said, nope, not very hard. He said, well, how about coming over for an interview? So I came over for an interview, and that's when I really got excited about it. Despite the long layoff from coaching, Inniger still demands perfection from his players. I warned him about me, too. I mean, I warned the administration. I said, I'm hard. I said, I'm, I'm tough. I'm going to go after your kids more than you can even imagine because I'm going to demand excellence and I'm going to push him as far more, more expectations than you have themselves. So we've played two and we've got that. One of his current players has a perfect analogy on just how knowledgeable the coach really is. How much he's forgotten, I think, is how much we know kind of thing. Just like he knows so much about the sport. A testament to his experience and his age. Excellent shot. It's hard. I mean, I'm tired. I go home and take naps, and that's not a joke. I mean, I, I, I get tired at 69. Whether it's patrolling the sidelines at NDSU or Park Christian, this coach wouldn't have it any other way. Inniger will give up his coaching duties at the end of the season to assistant coach Josh Lee.
guys. How cool to see a legend like Irv help out his community. Yeah, he's a great coach and even better person. Some might think of it as a part-time job, but a group of NDSU music students view it as a way to give back to the community. Reporter Onize Ohikere shows us how students are taking melodies from the classroom and sharing it with others. The gift of music is one that touches the hearts of many. At NDSU, students like Nick Posner are putting this gift to use through the NDSU Music Academy. Nick might seem like the average student as he goes about his day, but twice every week he gets to do what he loves, teach music. So then the next half of it is the backwards. I just like getting the students in here and just passing on my knowledge of music to them because playing the violin shouldn't be a chore. <laughs> Since the beginning of the academy, Nick has been a violin instructor teaching about a dozen students each semester. The Music Academy works in partnership with the Peace Lutheran Church in Fargo to use its room space for music lessons. With 12 music teachers and 75 students each week this semester, the academy does its fair share of service. There's always a need for more music teachers. There seems to be, there's never enough, even though there's great music teachers in town, there's always more students that are looking. Um, and then it gives our graduate students and undergraduate students the experience of teaching as well. As for Nick, the most fulfilling part of teaching is sharing. It's just seeing the students coming in and learning, like passing on music, because not many people anymore really appreciate the music, and you just got to pass that on. As students come and go each semester, the Academy continues to preserve and share the value of music. With photographer Seri Switujewski, Onizio Hikere, Campus News. The Music Academy is in its third year and provides music education to students ages 4 through 18 years old. And that does it for this edition of Campus News. We leave you with another look at scuba class. Thanks for joining us and have a great week. Campus News is produced by the Television News Workshop in the Department of Mass Communications at Minnesota State University Moorhead in cooperation with Prairie Public Television.